I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to remove silence from an audio region. What this allows us to do is to take an audio file, which has maybe got some audio in it we don't want, and to remove that from a file so we can just clean it up a little bit. Before we see exactly how that works, let's just have a listen to this track. <laughs> Okay, four bars of disco. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at exactly what's in these files and just begin to see what we could potentially do if we decided to uh, remove the silence from a specific file here. Now, in particular, what I'm going to do is to focus on the drums. You can see that there are four tracks that are making up the drum part. And if we focus on the snare drum individually, what we're going to hear is that for every single individual snare hit that we want and that's part of the file, what we've also got is some spill. Because of the way that these sounds have been recorded, we've got the sounds of the other drum sources coming through the snare mic. Let's have a listen. So we can hear all those individual snare hits, but we can also hear some of the hi-hat and some even of the kick drum as well coming through that microphone. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select the snare part here and I'm going to come to functions and I'm going to select remove silence from audio region, which you can also see has the key command of option X. So when I select this option, we get to see this little dialog box, which pops up. And what it allows us to do is to set a threshold to determine exactly what silence is in the context of this file. So in other words, what we're doing is setting a volume threshold and saying, right, if a, an individual hit falls below this volume, I'm going to pretend that it's silence. I'm going to chop up the region and remove that from the audio file. So you can see that as I adjust the threshold, in either direction, if I make it so loud, in fact, at zero dB, that the volume has to achieve that volume, you can see that effectively the entire file will be replaced by silence. Well, that's not very useful. What I'm going to do instead is to start dropping the threshold and we'll see the opposite happening, which is as we um, slowly bring the threshold down, more and more of the original file is retained. It's going to be chopped up into pieces, but we're going to hear more of those individual hits. So what I'm looking to do here is to set a threshold which is going to retain the snare drums that I want, but more or less silence everything else out. And a roughly minus 10 dB looks like it's going to do that for me. So when I press OK, what happens is that this file is replaced. In, uh, what we've done is effectively ask Logic to chop it up for us to retain only the hits that we want. So now we should only hear the main snare hits. Sure enough, that's working. Now, in the context of the drums overall, that might work really nicely, but it could be that actually these are quite brutal chops. Remember, because these are individual audio regions, we have an opportunity now just to actually change them ourselves if we want to. The end looks like it's going to be fine where we've got a little fill, but if I wanted to, I could select all of these other regions and just tease out a little bit more sound on either side of them just to make the decay of each of those snare drums feel a little bit more natural. And equally, I might decide that the very start of them, the attack phases, may be just a little bit brutal as well. Well, and again, I could just adjust the beginning just to bring in a little bit of volume in advance of each of those transient hits, so we're not running the risk of just slightly chopping them. So what that means is that we've effectively um, made the snare drum a whole lot tighter. We've taken all of this sort of ambience or spill from the other microphones out of the source. Let's hear the drums overall now with uh, this change that we've made. And let's just compare that to the original. Remember, at any stage, I could throw away all of these regions apart from the first one. And then what I could do would be to readjust the start and end points and get all of my snare drum back. By chopping up an audio file like this, we're not throwing anything away. All we're effectively doing is turning an audio file into individual regions. So let's hear how that compares. Okay, so you can hear that obviously once we've chopped this file up, we get a much cleaner sound. Now it's worth saying that actually a cleanness of sound isn't necessarily what we want. 
whenever we actually make drum recordings, there's a sort of liveness that comes from the spill when uh, individual drum sounds make their way into other microphones. So don't feel like this option to remove silence in this way is mandatory. It's not something you have to do in order to make a really clean drum sound. In fact, often drums sound at their best when they've got this slightly swampy quality where um, individual sources make their way into a range of microphones. So within this video, what we've had a chance to see is the benefit of removing silence from an audio region. Now remember, in a live drum recording like this, that's not necessarily what you want to do. There's a sort of swampiness that comes from hearing individual drum sources in different microphones, and sometimes that's the glue that makes a drum kit sound fantastic. So this isn't a mandatory technique, but if you do have an audio file that you want to clean up, here is a one-stop solution for that.